I'm back with my haul for January 2021 and I have so many manga that I'm really happy to get into within this haul. But that being said, blank new year to my entire audience. I know that we are coming into this year with reservations and wondering how things are going to go but we have so much of manga and anime to fall back on this year. So many good titles that are coming out I'm really excited about. And I also just want to give a quick thanks to the people who have liked, subscribed and even just viewed my video. I think last year I started my channel not really expecting much but I'm really happy with the feedback the community is giving me and I can't wait to continue growing this year. With that being said, I'm going to go over my haul and we are going from most well-known to least well-known in my opinion. I got a package and it is actually my most popular title. Let's just get into it, shall we? So here is the package. As you can see, it says loot.co.za. I really do enjoy getting my manga from this specific place because it always comes bubble wrapped and um, it is super duper nice. So let's just get into it. So, and then also across. There we go. So, let me just unbox this. Here we are. Let's just take this off. Also this. I will just quickly get it out of the package and also take off the slip. So here it is. This is what was in the package. Let me just quickly take this off as well. Uh, there we go. Oof. Wow. So here we go. It is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This is part one, uh, Phantom Blood. And I was just really curious to get into this one because I have heard really mixed things about the anime adaptation. So I was curious to see if maybe I would just prefer the manga. And this release is just really, really gorgeous. I mean, it has a matte finish as well as some spot gloss, as you can see on the character on the front. I do hope this one is really good. I was hoping to get into the specific arc in the manga and then continue in the anime because people have extremely mixed things to say regarding the part one adaptation of the manga. I believe that it is the weakest part, so maybe that's why, but I was just curious and I'm also really keen on seeing how the art is inside. So let's just take a quick look at that. Here we go. It is quite detailed. I mean, it looks really good. So I like it. And also, the binding here is fantastic as well, I think. I do believe that, yeah, it looks like the pages are glued down, but it just looks really good. And I am quite happy with this. This London. We get some really nice color pages as well, it looks like. Yeah. Really, really good color pages. To summarize, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a manga sporting outlandish characters, frantic humor, and kinetic battles that follow the multi-generational tales of the Joestar family and their never-ending battles against evil. Jonathan Joestar meets his adoptive brother Dio, who derives pleasure from seeing his brother suffer. It's the beginning of a long and hateful relationship. This is physically the first hardcover in my collection, but we'll get into more details at the end of the video about that. Next up, we have a highly anticipated release because it's inked by the celebrated Inio Asano. Here is volume one of Dead Dead Demons, Dead Dead Destruction. And I also happen to have picked up volume two as well. I mean, these releases are just so high quality coming from Viz. They have a really nice matte finish as well as spot gloss and uh, you know, in the title, which is kind of sprayed across the entire front cover. I really like it. There's also flip covers. Wow. I really, really do love that. And I also like the fact that this one actually comes out to be an entire character illustration. I think it is very, very pretty and well done. And the back also has just some information about the author, but it is a nice little touch that I really do like. The story follows Kadote Koyama, who is on the cusp of college. Despite this being stressful in and of itself, there also happens to be an alien invasion, with spaceships looming over his city. The Japan self-defense forces launch conventional weapons towards the UFOs in hopes of destroying them to no avail, and civilization begins to ignore the threat overhead. This is one that I couldn't help peering into due to its drop-dead gorgeous art. Let's open to a random page. Look at this. I mean, it is just... It's really gorgeous. Every single thing of it is just very, very detailed. And you can't help 
but just fall in love with these character designs as well as the effort put into them. So there we go, those are the first two volumes of Dead Dead Demons, and next up we have an effort to diversify my shelf with more comedy. I actually picked up volume one of A Witch's Printing Office. There's a spine, and then also here is the back, which has some really cute chibi characters. To get into the summary, basically Mika Kamiya looks forward to enjoying her post-comic market haul when fate whisks her away to a fantasy land. She's hunting for spells to take her home, but instead of searching around, they come to her, since she has a stand at Magic Market. Guests are eccentric and lines are chaotic. What could go wrong? This is a beautiful matte finish by Yen Press that actually has a rough texture, making the grimoire aesthetic even more realized than it should be. I've seen this one in a few people's hauls and I'm extremely excited to get into it myself. I also can't wait to dive into its general wackiness. This haul has aliens galore with our penultimate volume being volume 1 of Cosmo Familia by Hanokage. If the author sounds familiar, it's because they are the person behind the art for the Puella Magi Madoka Magica manga specifically, and it definitely shows with how cute the character designs are. The story follows Amakawa Alice, whose family disappeared six years prior. Around this time, the cute but deadly cosmops invaded her world, with Alice wielding a scythe and defending the few humans who had managed to survive. Alice hopes that her family will return to her one day, despite everyone believing that her mother Rika is the person who caused the invasion in the first place. I also couldn't help flipping through this one similarly to Dead Dead Demons because of how cute the art is inside. It may not be the most detailed thing ever, but I think it's pretty good. And also, um, here are some of the Cosmos, actually. Perfect page I flipped to. Uh, that's how they look. They're just cute little puffballs, really. I mean, these ones look like tiny little puppies. So they're very, very cute. I also just wanted to mention that this is my first Seven Seas pickup, and I'm really, really impressed because uh, the cover is extremely sturdy, nice and thick. And inside the cover, we also have an illustration there of Alice, as well as some character descriptions. While I'm here, I just want to mention that for the manga that I cover in plastic, I usually put washi tape on them. And for this one specifically, these strawberries just seem to fit. So if you want to see more of that, let me know. But yeah, the art on the cover is really nice. And I also particularly like the design layout. Like if you look over here at the bottom, I really like those for some reason. So yeah. Ending off this haul, we have a series that I recommend to anyone watching this due to the wide amount of genres it manages to cover. That being Omnibus's 2 to 4 of 20th Century Boys. I am slowly but surely picking these up. I was so impressed by the first omnibus that I decided to get two to four, which is not something I usually do. I try my best to limit my buying of individual series because I never know whether I'm gonna like it or not, but this one is just, I mean, I have a really good feeling about it. So yeah, uh, here is volume three, which probably has my favorite cover, but uh, probably the most lacking back cover just because of the orange and pink. And also here is volume four. Also a pretty good cover, I think. I like um, the green of this one and the back is this kind of lightning blue, which is also pretty nice. I wanted to quickly mention that the back of volume two is probably my favorite. I do think that the light blue does stand out against the dark blue, almost purple, and that this is a nice matte finish with, as you can see, spot gloss. And in the back, that's really emphasized in this one specifically. You can see Kenji playing the guitar, and there's just so much of life in this one, I really like it. I'm ecstatic to get more of these, and I hope that I can catch up. I do recommend it quite highly. And now that we are here, I'm actually going to discuss the ones that got away. These are volumes that I currently do not have in my possession, because of one reason or the other, I'm just going to quickly get into it. So the first one is Miura Gochan. Now, this one I got, it was from Take A Lot, and yes, I'm going to call them out. I usually turn out to be so negative, but here we are. The first volume came, and it was damaged beyond compare. It was the most damaged volume I've ever gotten. So subsequently, it was the first manga that I ever returned in my entire life. And it was like extremely heartbreaking because it was my first time doing this. But basically, the cover was extremely warped. The entire front part of the volume was warped because of the way that it was placed into the box. Uh, there wasn't any packing. There was just some paper and it wasn't even like remotely protecting the volumes. No bubble wrap, no nothing. The side had a tear and then even more shocking, it also had just a tear like across the spine as well. It was really bad to look at and the back had a ton of dents so I had to send that one back, got a refund and ended up getting something else for that so I'm pretty happy about that. 
Next up, we have Smashed by Junji Ito, and this one ironically did come smashed. Who would have thought? This was also by Take A Lot. I cannot believe I'm not getting anything from Take A Lot again. I will stick to my loot.co.z area. I think they're pretty good. But Take A Lot, ugh, their packaging for books is just horrendous in my opinion. But anyways, that one came and all of the... Here's a good example, right? So I will take out the JoJo volume real quick. Right, so take a look at this JoJo volume and imagine that all of these corners here are just entirely bent. Now, this is a fantastic release. The Shiver and Smashed Junji Ito's story collections are a similar quality to that. And all of the edges came bent for the Smashed one. So I had to give that one back. I didn't know what else to do. I was really disappointed because I think the release quality is gorgeous for that one. It's also matte with a spot gloss. The last one I'm going to mention is Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. Now this one I am planning to get at a later time. I just didn't want to start a new series this soon, if that makes sense. And basically, it's quite expensive. It is by Kodansha. We got back ordered. That's the main reason why. I'm probably going to cancel it. And that's it for this haul. I realize that it's smaller than usual, but along those lines, I plan to make 2021 prioritize reading over collecting, because having over 10 volumes in my TBR just ain't it. Don't be surprised if you see other content from me besides hauls in the upcoming months. One that I'm particularly excited to get into puts two similar reads against each other in a battle to the death, and they just so happen to be in this haul. Do leave your guesses in the comments below as to which two those might be. And if you made it to the end, I can only assume you liked it, so consider subscribing and leaving a like to help the channel grow. That's all from me, folks. Have a good one.